Man, what's good with everybody? Peace and blessings. I hope everybody is having an amazing day. Today, I want to talk about distractions and how you're managing your time, guys. This is a very important factor on your walk with God, guys. The number one thing, guys, one of the number one things that the enemy can attack you with and can steal from you is your time, guys. Where are you putting your time? If most of your day, bro, you call yourself a Christian, but all your days, you're just spending, you know, idolizing things of the world, putting stuff of the world above God, putting yourself above God. You know, if you think your time on social media is more important than time with God, if you think that working is more important than time with God, you need to repent, bro, because all these things are idols. A lot of people do this nowadays. They like to say, oh, I'm my own God. And of course, the lowercase g God, because there's only one God, and that's Yahweh. That's the Lord of Lords, King Jesus, three in one. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and Yahweh. He's a three in one God. But anyways, a lot of people try to say, oh, I'm my own God. And that's the most selfish thing I've ever heard. That's the most new age, having no fear of the Lord type of thing that I've ever heard, guys. And I'm sure I thought this way before too, guys, but that is an idol, guys. You're making yourself an idol and you need to repent. If you're not spending time with God and you call yourself a Christian, if you think you're saved, fruits will show, guys. I'm judging, guys, because I can judge righteously. If you call yourself my brother or sister in Christ, you should have fruits. It says we can judge a tree by their fruits, right? And you should have fruits of repentance. You should have fruits of being saved. If you truly believe in Jesus, you're going to pray. If you truly believe in Jesus, you're going to be in his word. Of course, we have seasons where we're not always on point on prayer. We're not always on point with the word. But this is why you have to have a structured prayer and Bible life. And this is not religion, guys. I'm going to talk about this. It's not religion, guys. It's a relationship. What is a relationship, guys? It's a partnership. It's where two individuals come together in a partnership. If you're in a relationship with God, you can't just say like, oh, God's got me, bro. I'm just going to keep focusing on me and God's got me. That's not how it works, guys. You need to submit to God. You need to submit to God every single day. And like I said last week, I made a little video talking about this, that every single day you have to submit to God and resist the devil so he will flee from you. The devil will try to distract you every single day from your time in the secret place. He'll try to distract you from prayer, from reading the Bible, from getting closer to God. Why, and I mentioned this, is because if the devil can't have you going straight to hell, at his best case, he'll have you being a powerless Christian. Meaning the best case for the devil is you could be a powerless Christian, going to church, but not actually reading your Bible. Going to the church events, but not actually praying. Being involved in all this community work, but not actually in the secret place, being seeking God. And that's dangerous, guys. In the Bible, it says, all you who work iniquity, depart from me for i never knew you so that's scary guys it's scary to think okay i have to really fear god i have to really reference him because if i don't if i don't have a relationship with god that's how i can get god that's how i can go to hell if you're really saved guys you will have a relationship with god and it will grow but you have to be careful man where the devil is distracting you the world's distracting you because the world i have my notes here because the world wants to make you focus on yourself and think you are your own god like i said earlier they want to make you think that you're your own god no focus on yourself you know all these self-help videos self this self that well the bible tells you to be selfless instead of selfish so guys focus less on yourself focus less on oh i'm going to be on self-improvement focusing on uh, my body focusing on how to get in the gym get ripped focus on jesus bro focus on the one who created you if you're going to go to the gym, go unto the glory of God. It says in the Bible to do everything unto the glory of God. Amen. But you got to realize, guys, that the world also wants you to think that possessions, the material stuff, the stuff that you see in person, even social media, the world wants to make you think that that'll fulfill you when it just leaves you more and more empty the more you hold on to it. So you guys heard that right. The more you hold on to material possessions, your, your followers on Instagram, the stuff that's vain, the stuff that doesn't matter, the more you hold on to it and you love that stuff, the more you think it fulfills you and the more you're lost, guys. The Bible says to not lay your treasures up on earth, but lay them up in heaven. Why? Because that's where we're going, guys. Our time here is short. We're going to heaven. Bro, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven when you die. And you don't know when that could be. You could die today. You could get in a car crash today. You could have a heart attack today. God forbid. But as a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're sealed by the blood of Jesus, you've turned to Jesus, you've submitted, you're going to heaven. So why would you lay your treasures up on earth? Why would you spend so much time catering to social media, catering to Netflix, to the stuff that doesn't even matter. And I hope this is convicting somebody. If you're watching this right now, don't click off the video. If you're mad, if you're starting to feel mad, that's conviction. Roll with it. Don't say, oh, this is condemnation. This is making me feel bad. Guys, I don't come on here to tickle your ears, guys. I come on here to see change in people. 
I come on here to talk conviction, talk with conviction of the Holy Spirit. I let the Holy Spirit use me in these messages. I don't want to tickle your ears and say, oh, it's all good, bro. Just keep going. You're blessed. The Lord favors you. Just keep walking. Hallelujah. The Lord's working on you. No, guys. Yes, God is working, but it's a partnership, guys. This walk, I've heard a wise man say, a man of God say that this walk is grace mixed with our discipline. And a lot of people would say, oh, that's a works-based salvation. Well, listen, it is not a works-based salvation, but faith without works is dead. And faith is literally believing in the things not seen, walking in belief. If you really believe in Jesus Christ, where do you believe? In your heart. When you believe in something in your heart, you're going to follow it. You're going to confess it. Amen. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on, bro. So if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, bro, you should be dying to yourself daily. You should be dying to the desires of your flesh. And bro, I know we all struggle with stuff. I know that there's all stuff that we struggle with, whether it be gossip, sexual morality. I'm here to tell you, bro, that that stuff is not normal, especially sexual immorality. If you're struggling with sexual immorality, bro, you need to overcome that. You need to, to repent right now. And, bro, I can't sit here and say I'm perfect. I was struggling with this recently. But right now I'm walking in victory, and I declare that in Jesus' name. If you're struggling with that right now, it's, it's not too late to repent, bro. Repent. Go in the secret place. Turn away. Say, God, I'm done with this. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm done, and I'm walking with you, Jesus. And I'm walking in victory. And, bro, if you're struggling with idolatry, putting social media, putting all that other stuff above God, you know, I can't sit here and say, oh, I'm perfect. I've never struggled with that. Of course I have. Bro, you have to repent. You have to turn away from it and turn to Jesus. If social media is your God, if Netflix is your God, you need to repent, bro. Make a structured prayer life. And this is not about religion. This is not about following a tradition or a culture. Make a structured prayer life. Why? Because in this busy, crazy world where we have work, you know, you might have school, you have families. When you have a structured prayer life, when you wake up early in the morning to pray before everybody in your house is awake, before work starts, an hour or two before work, an hour or two before school, and you make time in the day, three, two or three times, disciplined time in the day where you force yourself to get in that prayer closet, get in that secret place and pray, it's going to change everything, bro. Once you start rolling with that, and making a time in the day where you get in the word, making a time in the day where you worship God every single day. It's going to change everything on this walk, I'm telling you guys. I will never go back to not having a structured prayer life. It's like automatic to me, guys. No matter what's going on, even on the weekends, I make sure to set aside at least two hours a day for Jesus. At least. And it should be more, I know, because think about it. If you have 16 hours awake in a day, I'm just saying on average. If you're only giving two hours to God... I mean, that's kind of crazy, but we all got to start somewhere, bro. Even if it's 30 minutes, even if it's 10 minutes a day you're giving out to God and you're starting that way, bro, praise God. Praise God. Keep going, guys. We have to be disciplined on this walk because in this world, bro, you're going to get got if you don't stay in the secret place. You're going to get got if you don't read your word. I'm speaking from experience. The devil will get you because the devil knows the word of God. So when you don't know the word of God, the devil knows where to enter through the legal right, the open doors that you don't know about because you're not reading his word. Come on, bro. And the devil knows, oh, he messed up here. Here's where I can attack him. We have legal right. And then he sends his kingdom after you. But man, stay in the spirit. Stay prayed up, guys. Jesus loves you so much, bro. It's not too late to repent. It's not too late to, to give your life to Jesus. He died, he was buried, and he rose on the third day for you. His blood is the only thing that will wash you clean of your sins. I'm going to tell you right now, bro, you need Jesus. I'm going to be real with you, bro. I've been through a lot. I've almost died many times. I was in drug addictions. I was a drug dealer. I've seen many different sides of life. Witchcraft, drug addiction, drug abuse, violence. I've seen a lot of stuff, guys. And you need Jesus. I'm telling you right now. Muhammad ain't the way, Allah ain't the way, you know what I'm saying? It's Jesus Christ, he's the only way. So man, it's not too late to turn around. Even if you're a Christian and you're having a lukewarm phase or a complacency season, man, turn around, bro, give it to God. Surrender it to God in the secret place right now. So I'm gonna just pray a prayer for you guys, for anybody who's feeling distracted lately, for anybody who has been too focused on their self. And it, yeah, I just wanna remind you guys that Jesus is the main character, guys. You're not some main character in this movie. A lot of people, that's their problem, right? With social media and stuff, they think they're some main character and their pride gets all the way up to their head and inflates their head. They think they're some main character. And it's crazy, guys. Jesus Christ is the main character. Turn to him today. He's the only one who can save you. He's the only one who can get you to heaven and who will get you to heaven. In Jesus' name. 
So Father, I just pray right now for the person watching this. Lord, I pray that you would just put discipline on their heart. I pray you would change the desires of their heart, Lord. Change the desires of their heart from watching Netflix, you know, overeating, scrolling on social media instead of praying, scrolling on Facebook instead of praying. Lord, I pray you would change all those desires right now, Lord. I pray a change of heart and I pray conviction upon their heart, Lord. I thank you for your conviction, Lord, because it allows room for growth and change, Lord. And I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that the person watching this would just be changed by the renewing of their mind daily in the Word of God, Lord. That they would just grow and grow and grow with you, Lord. That they would make a structured prayer life, because it's not about religion, Lord. It's about relationship and partnership, Lord. And we come together, Lord, with you for that in Jesus' name, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you help us out, Lord. Yes, you have grace, but we have to put in work, Lord. We have to seek you, Jesus, because what kind of God would you be if we would just follow you like robots, Lord, without free will? So I pray you would just change that person's heart right now that's watching this video, Lord. In Jesus' name, I just bless them, Lord. And I pray your angels will protect them wherever they go, Lord. Amen. If you've stuck around this long for the video, man, God bless you. I pray that the Lord would just have his way in your life. And I pray that your prayer life would actually change. Conviction is good, guys. Conviction means change. Conviction means there's room for change. Remember, God has grace. That's why he convicts you. He wants you to change. Come on, bro. So, man, the Discord link is going to be in the comment section and in the description. Drop a like, subscribe, and comment if you knew it's going to help for the algorithm. And, man, God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus.